Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Welcome to Ask the Cheese Man. This is episode 260. Uh, today is, well, today is Sunday, my time, uh, at uh, 8am. Thank you so much for joining me today. There's so many people in the chat. It's really, really good. Um, very, um, oh, what's the word? Chatty, I suppose. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Um, thank you so much to all of my financial members, both YouTube members and patrons, uh, without your support. The show wouldn't go on. Special mention today to patrons Baz and Ange Tilly. Thank you, Baz and Ange, for your patronage. And thanks to everybody uh, on the list there. Uh, your financial support is always welcome. Don't forget the YouTube members, of course. And special mention to Jimmy Bizarro, Bizarri. Thank you, Jimmy. Um, and uh, thank you to everybody else on the list there. And you can see YouTube members in the chat. They've got a special little cheese icon next to their name, uh, and that uh, that uh, and I think their names yeah their names are green as well. So very cool. Thank you everybody for your financial support as always. Um, ongoing uh, videos. Uh, there is a for those who don't know, there's a cheese a day challenge going on in February. We're up to day twelve, uh, and the cheese today is Comte. So Comte is a very special cheese as far as uh, I'd never tasted it before, as you could probably tell on the video, which I've already released this morning just before we started the show. Um, typically, those episodes only run for about seven minutes, uh, but they are fun to watch. They're fun to make, that's for sure. I don't know if they're fun to watch. You let me know. Let me know in the chat um, if you're enjoying the, um, the Cheese Today Challenge. I have been working on other cheeses in the background, um, and Ben is now editing the uh, the next uh, Gavin reacts video. That seems to be quite popular. Um, so, uh, which is an extract from you know these live streams. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's all seems to be very good. Uh, everything seems to be working out. Um, Jim says he loves them. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. While we're on the topic, let's say good day to lots of people because we can. Um, first curd nerd out of the pot this morning was uh, Shauna. G'day, Shauna. Lovely to see you as always. And thanks for the photos, which we've got coming up in the gallery at 30 minutes past the hour. Uh, we've got a few nice pictures in there of people's cheeses and issues and that sort of stuff. So stay tuned for that. Uh, we've also got Valerie. Thank you, Valerie, for joining us today. And we've got Jim, as always, and BJ, Chadwick. Thanks, BJ. We've got uh, Ordo oh, Adorto Motor. Uh, g'day, how are you? I didn't see anything else. It's in a, I don't know what it says. Boa Tardi. I don't know what language that is. Sorry. Um, who else we got? We've got Just One Asbestos. G'day. Welcome, Katarina. Uh, JW, Bill, we've got uh, Charlie, we've got Eagle, um, who else? Jim Duffy, g'day Jim, uh, RTD Jazz, and Michael and Jenny, annoying fan Heidi, hello Heidi, uh, Patricia, all the way in Canada, g'day Patricia, lovely to see you as always, um, Alex, g'day Alex, from Baltimore. Reminds me of that song. Good morning, Baltimore. Yeah, from Hairspray. Yeah, that's, other than that, don't know much about the city, unfortunately. Got another Valerie from Ontario in Canada. Thank you, and loves the Cheese Today Challenge. Thank you so much. Um, Fun Pants 94, how are you? Um, uh, Darren and Cheryl. Love to see you, Cheryl. And Herb, good on you, mate. Um, welcome to the show. So, lots of uh, wonderful curd nerds there, and hopefully you can hear the audio track in the background. So that's cool. All right. Um, uh, so cheese is coming up in the challenge. So, 
Um, well, tomorrow you probably already know there's a Tasmanian bush pepper cheese, uh, and then there's um, uh, feta. I managed to get some PDO feta, so real feta, uh, and that was quite amazing. Today I'm actually shooting some more videos uh, for the Cheese a Day challenge. So just between you and me, I don't actually eat a cheese every day. Well, I do have cheese most days, but um, when I shoot the videos, I do them in batches of seven. Uh, so I, I don't know if I've shattered anybody's, um, uh, I, I shattered the illusion, but yeah, I, I, I film them in batches of seven. Um, so there's actually four days in the month that I eat cheese. Sorry about that, but you know, it's more efficient for uh, editing because then I can give Ben a whole bunch and he spends two or three days just editing them all. Um, but we got some um, some cheese I got from Millua, um, which is um, a cheesemaker in uh, New South Wales who are quite uh, famous here in Australia. So I've got a, a washed rind cheese. I've got a goat camembert, a Normandy-style camembert, and a goat blue. So that's very interesting. I even got Parmigiano-Reggiano coming up. Uh, Snowdonia Black Bomber Cheddar. Um, a Red Leicester. We've got a, a Fricko Goat Cheese from the Netherlands. Uh, one of those processed Dutch smoked cheeses that you see, a little ring. They've got a brown band around the outside. Just wanted to try that again, see if it had changed any. I even got um, the cheese that cannot be named. <laughs> uh, I thought I'd buy a PDO version of that and check that out. I've had it before, but we'll see how that goes. Um, and a couple of other ones. Uh, even some Havarti. Some real AOC Havarti for, from um, Denmark. So, yeah, we've got some very interesting cheeses coming up. Um, uh, so, yeah, so and people have asked where I've been getting them. Um, well, all over. So I ordered some online from Ashgrove Cheeses. That's why... In the early days of the challenge, you've seen a few of those. Um, like I said, I've just I've ordered a few from Millua, um, which is another cheesemaker here in Australia. But I've tried to go to the supermarket and see if I can find PDO and AOC, which are the protection designation of origin uh, cheeses uh, that come out of uh, Europe. And it, it's not a lot of them are here. We, we do have some. Um, and uh yeah not a lot because a lot of them are raw milk um uh some the, the, like the comte today was a raw milk cheese so i managed i don't know how they got that through customs but they managed to get it there so that was cool um but yeah raw milk cheeses into australia we're getting a trickle there's not a lot of raw milk um raw milk cheese manufacturers here in australia either because the rules are so strict um so, but yeah, that uh, Comte, if you haven't seen the video I've released today, uh, blew my mind. It's just so nice. So good. Anyway, um, uh, Patricia says, glad you think Comte is a very special cheese. I have one aging at this very moment. Got the recipe from uh, a Polish home cheesemaker, Domo. Oh, goodness me. I pronounce, pronounce it. Domo, oh, can't even say it. Oh, don't worry about it. But anyway, um, it's very good. <laughs> Thanks, Patricia. Appreciate it. Um, Fun Pants says, "Howdy, Mr. Gavin. Planning on making Tracy's yesterday's cheese this afternoon with some dried Thai chilies to make it spicy boy. A spicy boy. Nice. Uh, yeah. Uh, and Tracy's actually in the chat somewhere. Where are you, Tracy? Um, I've missed just chat. Where is, it? Where is it? I did see it. There was a Tracy chat there somewhere. Where did the heck did it go? No, I've missed it. I don't know where the heck it's gone. Cheese needs? No. Um, you're there somewhere. I've lost it. Doesn't matter. Um, Cheryl says, um, Hi, Gavin. I made a goat tome. I was going to do a natural rhyme, but managed to... Fracture both wrists. Goodness me. If I clean it well, can I vacuum pack it? Yes. Yes, you can. Um, natural rinds are best for tomes, but look at a pinch. Um, nobody's going to judge ever. Um, certainly not on this channel and not in this community. Um, 
if you need to vacuum pack your cheese, you do it. I, I vacuum pack quite often because there are a lot of um, fiddly cheeses that uh, some say need natural rinds. But, you know, if I look back at um, one that I was going to do a natural rind on, that was the Al Alpine Blossom. I was going to do a natural rind and then uh, put the flowers on, but I thought it better against it because otherwise um, I would have had to scrape the rind off and then put the flowers on. So I vac packed it. Um, normally I do a Gruyere that's a natural rind um, but this time I did a Gruyere style with a twist there's a few little changes um, and I got amazing the flavor was just it blew me away it was just great um, uh, Jim says uh, mm, glad Gavin is a cheesemaker <laughs> thank you thank you Jim um, uh, H7 Apollo says we're curd nerds does that make you the curd doctor? Um, no, not really. Um, I think there's already somebody taken that moniker. Um, yeah, Dr. Casero. Uh, uh, what's his name? Dietrich out of New Zealand. Calls himself the cheese doctor uh, in Spanish. Oh, goodness me. Sebastian, g'day. Lovely to see you, mate. Um... Heidi says, my Coltswold is air drying right now. I'm a bit worried because I accidentally let the curds heat too quick. Yeah, if, you, if the curds do heat too quick, it locks in too much whey and can cause bitterness in the final cheese. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Um, see how it goes. You, you can't tell at this stage. You'll never know, but um, uh, just continue to age it. And if it does tend to be bitter then you can cook with it and the bitterness goes away. So, uh, yeah, that's that's always a tip. Um, RTD Jazz says, my cheese cave temperature set for 50 Fahrenheit, uh, but our temps in Oklahoma are cold right now in the winter. It usually stays around 42 to 50. Uh, will my cheese need to ripen longer? Um, so, all right, so the... So the cheese fridge stays around 42 to 50. Um, yeah, so that's why it's always good with with the uh, the hard cheeses and the blue cheeses and the ones you can actually push a cheese tryer into. It's always good to have a taste um, to check if it's, you know, aging. That's the only way um, commercial cheesemakers or artisan cheesemakers can tell uh, whether the cheese is ready to eat and they use a cheese tryer uh similar to do i have one here um yeah i do so i like this bad boy this one's from a new zealand company that we sell so cheese tryer uh and you insert it into the cheese and check it out and get some taste out of it uh, let's pop that back up there there we go <coughs> um yeah, look, you, you, the only way to know is to taste it, uh, unfortunately, whether it's ready or not. But yeah, it will take a little bit longer to ripen, not too much. Stick to the, the uh, suggested um, uh, the suggested timings for maturation in the, um, uh, in the recipe and then go from there. Uh, annoying uh, fan says, good on the filming of the cheese today. I can't imagine doing that every single day. Um, yeah, so the first, uh, so Heidi, the first time that I did the cheese a day challenge, the first three days, I actually did it every day. And I learned pretty quickly that you should always batch. Uh, if you're doing a project like this, then always batch the filming because, you know, you got everything set up and, you know, there, there's a, there's, you know, a little bit of YouTube magic going on with, um, you know, changing the apron and changing the shirt every film, every every session. Uh, so it looks like um, I'm doing it every single day and it's a different apron every day. So, yeah, it's uh, it's, it's it's good fun. Um, anyway. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Heidi says, oh, I'm all excited about any goat cheeses. Yeah, there's, there's a few coming up, which is really good. Uh, I wanted to, because, um, um, and as Persnickety said, goat's cheese makes for amazing scallop potatoes. It does too. 
Um, so I wanted to try a few goat's cheeses and lately I've been able to find some, which is amazing. Like we've already had the um, uh, Meredith Dairy um, Sherv, so that was beautiful, absolutely the one with dill. Um, but yeah, they're so good. Um, anyway, really cool. Uh, so, and I know a lot of you out there do have your own goats. So I thought, well, if I can get some goat cheeses, then it'll, you know, even I will learn that. And this, I'll start again. I'm all over the place today. Hang on. I need a coffee. So even I will be able to then think that I could replicate it. And there's a, here in uh, Melbourne anyway, there's a new goat's milk um, that is in the supermarkets um, that is hopefully not um, ultra pasteurized so I'm going to give that a try soon in the next few videos so um, after I've tried these cheeses and try and figure out um, which cheese is is one of the best to try for a, a, a goat milk one um, I hope I will be impressed by the uh, goat's milk Camembert from um, Millua, so we'll we'll try that. I'm trying that today, so we'll see how that goes. Um, Natalie says, "What's a good beginner cheese to make?" Um, well, Natalie, there's quite a few um, simple cheeses. So um, on the channel, there's lots of recipes in the beginner section, um, and specifically, there's one video called "Beginners Cheeses uh, Without a Cheese Fridge." Um, so I do list five or six different cheeses so in no specific order you can always try paneer which is a very simple indian cheese cottage cheese um ricotta whole milk ricotta uh, which is just made with whole milk it's like a white cheese very nice very simple um halloumi uh feta is a simple one um uh, and the version that I've made in the past, there's a few versions on the channel. So there's a cow's milk halloumi, uh, cow's milk feta, cow's uh, a goat's milk feta, and a, a proper real Greek feta um, with uh, sheep and goat's milk. Um, what else? Uh, Bel Paese is always a good one to start with because you don't need a cheese fridge for that. Um, halloumi, I think I might have mentioned that already. Uh, and a couple of um, semi-hard cheeses. Uh, so there's a good one called Kefili, which is a Welsh cheese, and it only takes three weeks before you can eat it. Um, and uh, another good one is Guido's Hard Italian Cheese, or Easy Hard Italian Cheese. I think it got it listed on the channel. As. So there you go. There's a few to, um, to get going. Um, Molly said, made it to the stream for the first time today. Well done, Molly. Welcome to you, and good to see you as well. Um, uh, Jim says, um, a Dorto motor comment translates from Portuguese to good afternoon. Ah, fantastic. Thank you, mate. Um, Natalie says, what's the hardest cheese to make as in the most difficult, um, uh, any mold ripened cheeses are more difficult than say semi hard and hard cheeses. Um, but it's all. It's all relative. Um, if you you know you start off making mold ripened cheeses and perfect them, then other cheeses may find you might find more difficult. Um, during my cheese making journey, uh, I avoided making cheddar, which is the world's most popular cheese, um, uh, just before mozzarella. Um, I avoided making cheddar because I was. Um, not frightened, but um, put off by the chattering process. And now that I've done it a couple of times, it is easy as pie. So simple and certainly does make the cheese, gives the cheese that special texture uh, and uh, special flavour as well. So chattering is so simple. Um, but yeah, it, it's all relative, you know. Uh, but the mould ripened cheeses are more difficult during affinage, but they do take... Uh, a lot less time than, say, the hard cheeses. <coughs> Goodness me. All right. Um, oh, the curd nerd light's going off. Um, who's that then? That's Jim. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. Um, $5 with no message. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. Um, 
everything goes towards the cheese making fund of course um, and uh, keeps the videos flowing thanks mate appreciate it I love the curd nerd lot um, persnickety says my first cheese was a Colby uh, and it actually came out well yeah Colby's a little bit more trickier than um, some cheeses uh, because there's a washed curd portion where you um, wash the curds with water halfway through the process to remove some of the lactose to make it a milder cheese, which Colby definitely is. Um, annoying fan says, uh, definitely not mozzarella, Natalie. At least not for me. It's my kryptonite. Yeah, nobody... Um, quick mozzarella is not such an easy cheese to make. Um, it is very dependent on the type of milk you're using. Um and it, it's, it's a bit fiddly. Um, I have made a video saying mozzarella is a uh, quick mozzarella is not a beginner's cheese because there's just too many variables. Um, unless you've used a kit, of course, which has specifics and they give you the ingredients so you don't have to go out and buy them and guess and all that sort of stuff. Um, anyway, uh, just one asbestos says this might be too nerdy, but what are the laws around raw milk cheeses in Australia? Okay, yeah, no, not too nerdy. A good question, though, mate. Um, so, remembering back, and I hopefully I'll get it right, um, the Australian and New Zealand food safety standards for raw milk cheeses state that the cheese must have been cooked uh, during the cheese-making process to at least above 48 degrees Celsius. Uh, during the making process uh, then it has to be matured uh, at uh, 10 degrees Celsius for at least 60 days now it that that's from when I read it about two years ago um, I don't know if it's changed but that 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 were the, they were the current rules two years ago when I looked at the standard um, so they're the rules um, plus there is a whole bunch of testing that the milk has to go through uh, there are spot inspections on the dairies for hygiene. Um, and yeah, it does make it quite difficult. And so there's only a few types of cheeses that they can make. So um, things like, um, you know, the harder Italian cheeses and Alpine cheeses are the ones that can be made from raw milk in Australia. Um, Patricia says... Just wondering if the raw milk restrictions in Australia might vary from state to state. In Canada, it's easy to get locally made raw milk cheeses in Quebec, but not in other provinces. Um, no, it doesn't. Um, I think Victoria was one of the last states to change the law uh, as far as restricting sales of raw milk. I think the rest of the states uh, had already put that in place Uh and as far as st selling raw milk cheeses, it's one Australian standard, so the states can't change uh, anything from that, from the food standards. Um, so, yeah, but good question, though, Patricia. Uh, yeah, Quebec has a more um, French, I suppose, outlook as far as cheese making goes, so that's probably why um, they allow more you know, raw milk cheeses. It's a French tradition. You know, pasteurisation didn't come along until, um, you know, I think the 1700s. Um, but, uh, yeah, they were making raw milk cheeses and continue to do so today. So, um, Just one of Spessa says, I don't find it hard to find raw milk cheeses in Ontario. Um, Molly says, raw milk laws vary uh, from state to state in the US as well. Yep. Uh, and Patricia says, raw milk cheeses can be purchased in Nova Scotia as well, but they are imported rather than locally made. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Shauna says that she's loving the new aprons. They look amazing. Yeah, they're very colourful. Um, I picked the most colourful ones, I suppose. There are quite a selection. Um, can I... Can we see... Not wanting to plug merch at this early stage, but why not? Um, <laughs> because I can. 
Uh, let's have a look. Aprons, aprons, aprons. I'm just bringing it up on a separate screen, which we'll see in a minute. Uh, they're all the way down the bottom. Why? Why are they at the bottom? All right, so um, so there's two types. Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a quick look at this. So we're over on the merch store. Let's have a look. Why can't we see the full thing? Whoop, there we go. Uh, so it's merch.cheeseman.tv. So we've got two aprons listed there. So we've got the Apprentice Curd Nerd, and we've got some lovely colours. Uh, green, orange. I've got the orange one as well, and I've got the navy one, or royal blue they call it. There's like a pastel blue one, which stands out quite well. A nice white one, if you're into that dairy sort of mode. Even got a lovely purple one. I haven't got that one personally. Kim would like that. She likes uh, purple. But there's another version as well, um, which doesn't show up. Hang on, where is it? I'll go back, go back. Um, and that's the G'day Curd Nerds one. And I, because of the pattern and the colours of the little logo thing there, um, I didn't do too many. I only did the ones that actually seemed to stick out uh, grey and yellow. So, yeah, they're pretty good. Um, in Australia, they're $58. They're not cheap because they're coming from, um, uh, from the US and Europe. Um, we've got a super chat going on there. Goodness me, I need to, uh, need to get to that. Um, who's that then? Sorry if that made anybody a bit excited. That's from Cheryl. Thank you so much, Cheryl. Uh, just wanted to see the Curd Nerd sign flash. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you for the $20 US. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, so... Um, what's this? RTD Jazz says, no, it's blocked. Shouldn't be. Um, it should be available to everybody. Merch.cheeseman.tv uh, as far as I know, it's not restricted anywhere. But anyway, sorry to hear that. Uh, just one asbestos says, There are two local unpasteurized cheddars I buy regularly. Probably more to be found. Yeah, I noticed when I was um, hunting around the um, uh, hunting around the supermarket, I was surprised to find, you know, cheeses like Comte, which is raw milk, cheeses like parmigiano reggiano which we've got so many knockoffs here in australia uh, that they call label as parmesan um so yeah it um uh, uh it's surprising when i do find them um roquefort has been in australia for a while not too long and that's a raw milk cheese as well uh made raw sheep's milk um rtj says no the sign was blocked Oh, okay. No, you, you should be able to do a super chat just about anywhere these days. Uh, that's what makes the Curd Nerd light go. Anyway, um, more questions here. Uh, Titus says, I wonder if there is a centrifuge like an old washing machine in a spin cycle to separate curds and whey. Uh, funny you should say that. Not, not so much for curds and whey because the centrifuge would... Um, uh, break the cell walls in the curd and turn it into mush. Uh, but when they separate um, cow's milk into skim milk and cream, they use a centrifuge type thing. Uh, and that's how they get the heavier fat molecules from the cream. Uh, have a look, look online for a, a separator, cream separator, and you'll see what I mean. It's actually a centrifuge. Um, okay, cool. Uh, Patricia says, if you ever make um, Jibanyat again, try using goat's milk instead of cow's milk. It's quite wonderful. Good tip. I will. Thank you, Patricia. Um, I've actually got this customer that rings me up, uh, Andre. I don't know if he watches the show. He's a great bloke. Um, he used to be a pilot many, many years ago. Uh, he's in, in Sydney somewhere. Um, and he and he's in love with Jibanyat, and he and he, he bought a whole bunch of um, little uh, little baskets, and he calls me all the time and uh, tells me about his cheese. It's just lovely. It's great to get a call from him. Um, but you know, customer service—that's what it's all about. I love talking to the people that buy the stuff from us um, here at Little Green Workshops as well. So. If you're going to, if you if you are a customer of Little Green Workshops, and I know many of you are, uh, don't forget that you can give me a call during working hours here in Melbourne, 
uh, if you've got any cheese questions. It's a part of the after sale support. Uh, Fred Touche says, uh, how do you raise acidity if your pH hasn't got gotten low enough after a final heating before washing when applicable? Um, how do you raise your acidity? Time. Time is uh, the only thing that raises pH when you've got your... Um, uh, when you get your starter culture in there, that's the only thing why you can do it. You can't go around adding vinegar or anything like that. Um, but yeah, it's the lactic bacteria that converts the lactose into lactic acid, which um, uh, lowers the pH, um, so it makes it more acidic. Um, so it's not raising the acidity, it's lowering the acidity. So seven to one. So. Anyway, that was the uh, the alarm for the... Uh, let's just clear that. Can we clear it? Um, time for the gallery, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me just get it up and get the little things up. Where are we? The first one. Rightio. So, the gallery. Let's just go there. Gallery is photos that um, I get sent in by Curd Nerds. Let me just make that bigger. There we are. That's better. Um, and I'll just make me a little bit smaller. Whoop. There we go. It's amazing what I can do on the fly here. Um, righto. So, yeah, there are photos sent in by you. And I'll show you how you send the photos in at the end of this segment. Uh, so, the, first of all, this is a, a goat tome from Michael and Jenny. Um, in Adelaide, Michael and Jenny are watching. So, fantastic little montage there. Um, and great waxing skills too, by the way. Uh, the wax looks so clean. But a goat tome, beautiful colour. I love the whiteness of the goat's milk. Uh, but absolutely fantastic. And I love the little dipping pot there you've got. Um, and yeah, nice clean, a big pot. And you get a nice clean waxing on it by dipping it in. Um, but yeah, very cool. Well done. Um, so when's it ready? Don't know. Um, so 8th of February 2023 is when it was waxed. Uh, three months maybe? Three, four months? I don't know, Michael, chime in. That would be lovely. But yeah, fantastic. Thank you for sending that in. I'd love to see uh, your thoughts on what it tastes like. Um, so that'd be cool. This one's from uh, Shauna. Make a little bit bigger. And there's a little mousey there. Uh, where the heck is the spiel? Here we are. Uh, says, good morning, Gavin and Kim. A couple more photos for the gallery. Uh, the first is my second orange and walnut kefili. Air dried and ready to be vacuum packed. Uh, I use your smoky paprika kefili recipe again, as it was so good the first time. Uh, it's ready for tasting in three weeks. So orange and walnut, that looks really interesting. I'll have to give that a go. Um, I'm always up for a variation. Orange and walnut kefili. Thank you, um, Shauna, for the inspiration, mate. Uh, the second photo is... Oops, second photo, sorry. Whoop, there we go. I'll make that a bit bigger. There we are. Uh, so second photo is my Blue Pyrenees, fresh out of the press. Uh, this is from the 200 Easy Homemade Cheese Making Recipes book by Deborah Amron Boys. Um, I have modified this recipe a little as I would have more chance of getting butterfly milk than sheep's milk <laughs> specified. Uh, so I use cow's milk and increased it to 10 litres. I think I will still get a nice cheese. Yeah, I think you will too. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this one progresses, Shauna. So uh, feel free to share it um, and we'll show it and give updates as we go along. But very cool. Um, also, um, I solved my issue regarding the plastic mats. I put egg rings under them, lifts the mats up and it doesn't block the airflow. Ah, oh, very good. Yeah, very nice. Um, that's enough waffle from me. I'm loving the cheese today day challenge. So many cheeses to try. Um, you also sent in another photo. Um, let's have a look. And that's the stir made in action. So I love the sink, by the way. Um, and you've got your ink bird in there and keeping the water hot. 
Um, hopefully you found it. Um, so really cool. And we got the curd nerd light going off again. We'll um, we'll get to that in a second. I think it's Finca. Um, so we'll get to your yeah. We'll get to that in a second, Finca. Thank you so much for your super chat. Um, uh, and Shauna says, uh, thank you again for your guidance and sharing your knowledge. All the best. Thank you, Shauna. I appreciate it. Um, but I'm glad the stir mate helped somebody. Um, uh, I have used it again and I, it, it actually worked a bit better, um, uh, because I took, um, the top, the top can, yeah, here. So that, that top one I took out and it didn't seem to be clumping as much. But I'm going to use it in another cheese soon, so we'll see how that goes. Anyway, this one's from Steve. Uh, Steve says, uh, I thought I might show you my attempt at... What the heck is this cheese? Uh, oh, Farmhouse Cheddar Blue it was. Uh, the photos are about a fortnight apart. Uh, I note in your video you mentioned that you might wax uh, it after a month or so. What signs could tell you that it should be waxed thanks steve so that's uh it initially and then it's getting pretty gnarly there as as it does so that it has been pierced i've confirmed that with steve um so if it's getting a bit like that it probably has got a pretty good blue coating so my suggestion to him was um he could scrape this off now um depending on how uh firm the rind was still um, now, if he scrapes the blue off, then there is a good chance that it might be a bit mushy underneath. So it probably wouldn't need to be washed. Uh, sorry, vacuum packed. It's probably, um, I can see by the bulging, it's probably got a bit softer. It's probably ready to eat right now uh, with that amount of blue on the outside. Um, but yeah, scrape the mold off and then vacuum pack it. Uh, yeah, as long as it's still a bit firm because farmhouse cheddar blue was a firm cheese. Anyway, I think that is the end of the gallery. Yes, it is. Um, so how do you send in gallery photos? Let me show you how we do that. We go to the channel uh, page and we go to about just here. You can see my pointer. We go to about and we go down here to details and it says for business inquiries and you can view, view the email address. So that's the email address there that um, if you want to send a photo to me or a question about how your cheese is going make sure there's a photo with it because um, it makes it so much easier to diagnose so uh, that's the email address I won't click on it because I'll get spammed but uh, yeah you just go to the about tab of the channel and that's how you can find me uh, and uh, yeah we'll show them in the next gallery uh, now because we do a Wednesday and a Sunday show both with galleries let me know which is your preferred show that you want it shown on um, so that would make it so much easier. Alrighty. Um, Finker's Super Chat says, Hello, friends. $20 US. Thank you, Finker. Appreciate it. Um, says, Hello, friends. I hope everybody is well. No question. Just caught alive. Uh, uh, Weeper? Is that... That's in Portuguese? Uh, I'm not sure Spanish. Uh, I don't even know what that means. Somebody translate for me. That would be lovely. Thank you, Finca Rosa. I appreciate the super chat. Really do. Okay. Um, uh, let's have a look. Uh, here's from... I've uh, missed a whole bunch of stuff that I just cannot see anymore. It's gone out of my little console. Uh, Patricia says, Unsure what causes graininess, so I don't think that can be helpful. Either go to or use milk is traditional for Jibenyet. Um... And I didn't enjoy the used milk version, too rich and squishy. Oh, that's a good tip. Um, Jim says, are there items to be of to avoid adding to cheese? Yes. Uh, so a couple of things that um, really shouldn't be in cheeses, um, um, shouldn't be in cheeses that are um, aged. Uh, one is bacon really shouldn't because of the sodium nitrate you really shouldn't age it in cheeses you should put it in after the fact another one is fresh garlic for fresh cheeses no problems even belpa cannoli which um 
uh, is what I deem as a fresh cheese. So um, they're okay, fresh garlic, but anything after that, you anything after about a month of aging, you run into a problem um, of uh, botulism. So uh, don't add fresh garlic. Dried garlic, powdered garlic, fine, no problems at all. But um, yeah, that's that, that, that's my thoughts on that. Um, okay. Um, Jim says Super Chat was acting weird in the US. Uh, that's no good at all. Um, but we have had a few, which is fantastic. And thank you so much for those. Uh, Fun Pants says, when making blues, how do you care? Take care of your leftovers. I imagine vacuum sealing would make the blue turn brown. Yes, it does. Uh, and I doubt I could get through a wheel of blue in a reasonable time frame. Okay, so what do I do? I normally wrap it in, um, there's a micro perforated wrap with um, aluminium foil or a foil uh, on the outside and it has like a, a very a fine paper lining on the inside. So what I tend to do, the bits that I've left behind after a taste test, so I want to store them longer, I wrap them in this um, the foil wrap. It's, it lets it breathe uh, and doesn't allow for a buildup of gases um, and doesn't make your fridge stink either. So that's always good. Um, yeah, so there you go. Um, so that's what I do. Wrap it in silver wrap. Uh, in a pinch, I have been known to wrap it in aluminium foil, but that's only for a very short period of time. Um uh, Michael says, this is around the goat's tome is, yes, three to four months. Thank you, Michael. Um, um, oh, my glasses aren't working properly. Uh, Vasilin says, not a question, uh, but I truly love your videos. They are so relaxing, even though I might never make cheese myself. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, I have been told that um, uh, I have a calming voice. Apparently, um, Valerie says, I made the walnut orange for Christmas. Rave reviews. I'm going to have to give it a go. Um, Krogan says, um, I love this channel. Always something new to me here. Thank you, mate. Appreciate it. Eagle says, um, I live on an aluminium boat, so my seasonal cheese cave is between the saloon floor and the metal hull, 55 Fahrenheit. Uh, re my vacuum packing still, re my vac pack stilton or no a few shows ago oh okay uh or no yeah look um at a pinch uh once it's um once the blue's established and you've scraped it off if you really really need to vacuum pack your blue cheese you can do it uh, i received two um blue cheeses in the post i called it wedges of them vacuum packed it looks a bit thicker than mine so um my the plastic that I use. Um, so not sure if um, uh, that makes a difference, but yeah, I'm going to be trying them today anyway. Um, C. Scarson says, could you, you, can you use calcium phosphate instead of calcium chloride? Um, I want to make mozzarella. Would this one help both me by melting the mozzarella? Um, no, calcium chloride is the salt liquid salt that you should well the salt that you should be using but with mozzarella i find that you don't add the calcium chloride because part of the process of making making mozzarella is um the breakdown of the the protein walls and it actually works a lot better if you don't add too much calcium uh so i tend not to anyway uh shauna says with the stir mate I just stop it every 10 minutes or so and breaking any clumps away from the blade seems to work for me. Uh, making a sweet canella as we speak and we'll be using it. Yeah, I think I actually had to do that as well, Shauna, was stop it every, yeah, it was about 10, 15 minutes, probably 15 for me, um, and just checked the blades. But yeah, it does actually, if you've got a sore shoulder or sore shoulder sockets or sore, sore arms or limited mobility, it really can help. So... Uh, it doesn't really matter, you know, not stirring for 10 minutes is not stirring for 10 minutes, if you know what I mean. Uh, Jim says, when adding adjuncts, I've seen you do it uh, like your white stilton with apricots, milled it and then pressed it, 
Uh, I've seen it done with Patricia's Fundy Fog. Are there uh, items to avoid adding to cheese? Um, yeah, I, yeah, I answered that, Jim, already. Um, oh, it means most welcome. Puerto Rico. Oh, thank you, Finka. I appreciate it. Oh, goodness me. Um, <laughs> Patricia said, glad you translated that. When I plugged we put into Google Translate, it came back as website and Hawaiian. Oh, goodness me. Oh, goodness me. Elliot says, I can't watch today, but much love to Gavin and everybody watching. Thank you, Elliot. Appreciate it. Um, uh, uh, Jim says, a word of jubilation that is uttered by mainly Hispanics, especially within the Puerto Rican community, it is normally yelled at high volumes uh, in a nasal something. Oh, okay, thanks, Jim, for clearing that up. Um, Fun Pants says, follow-up question about blues and the foil. Does it require any form of maintenance from then on? I wanted to make a cheddar blue in the near future. Okay, so, look, blue cheddar is a little bit different, um, Nolan. So, yeah, so because they're a firmer cheese and normally blues have a higher fat content and they tend to go a little bit oozier i found with the farmhouse cheddar blue there was no issues i didn't even i just naturally rind the thing and you could because it's a firmer cheese and it doesn't go gooey as some cheeses blue cheeses tend to do um backpacking's fine um for that um with those harder cheeses the cheddar blues um that i've made in the past um i did wrap one in foil once but it dried out too much so yeah with those style of blue cheeses yes you can vacuum pack them with the normal runnier gooier sort of blue cheeses which most of them are then foil is the best way or the, the micro perforator wrap is the best way okay um valerie says how do you regulate the relative humidity in your container in the cheese cave do you add anything yes um in a lot of the videos I show that um, I use a, um, it's a dishcloth. Uh, in Australia, it's called a Chucks, C-H-U-X. Uh, and you're going to buy it in the supermarket. It's a dishcloth. It's a, um, it's a woven plastic fibre. And all I do is just soak that in water. Make sure it's a clean one, of course. Um, uh, I just soak it in water, squeeze it out, and then lay it flat underneath the mat in the ripening box. And that increases the humidity up to between 85 and about 90. I put a hygrometer in there once to check it out. And it stays at that as long as the uh, that cloth stays moist. Doesn't Not wringing wet. Uh, sorry, not wet, not dripping, but just moist. And that seems to keep the humidity at the right amount for the ripening period. So nice and simple. Simple is always the best when it comes to cheese making. Anything too complicated, usually... Um, prone to fail i found um heidi says gavin have you tried ply band cheesecloth um if so what are your thoughts on debating on buying some ply band what the heck is that never heard of it let's go and have a quick look um ply band cheesecloth it is ply band is a poly webbing Hang on, let me just show you what I'm looking at. Uh, ply band is a poly webbing used to line cheese moulds when pressing curds. This thin material is less prone to wrinkling than bulky, bulky cloth. So it's a plastic disposable cloth. Uh, oh, no, it says reusable here. Let's have a look. Let's go to this website, shall we? Uh, ply band 2, reusable five sheets. Okay. I have not seen it reusable before. Uh, it's a non-toxic FDA approved resin, antimicrobial and anti-mold. Uh, not support heavy loads, but can be used to drain using colanders or strainers. Oh, there you go. No, I haven't seen that product before. Uh, if anybody has used it, then, um, uh, then let me know in the chat, um, because I certainly have not used that product before. Um, so yes, I can't really answer your question, Heidi. Sorry. Um, 
Just one says, Gav, have you ever made cheese with milk other than the cow, goat or sheep? Uh, no, they're the main three. They're the only ones I've used. The only ones I can get my hand on. So, no. I have heard that they've actually used human milk. Um, there's a, there was a niche cheese maker in New York State that made a human milk cheese. Very interesting. Very expensive. Uh, there are some other uh, milks. There's actually a donkey milk um, cheese that is very, very expensive. Um, there is another, there's a reindeer milk cheese, which is really expensive as well, made in Lapland. Um, but yeah, anyway. Uh, Persnickety says uh, uh, they use Plyban mainly for pressed whey ricottas. Oh, okay. Molly says um, I've used Plyban and do not like it. It's not as flexible as real cheesecloth butter muslin. Um, good observation. Um, uh, Michael says, Jenny and I came across your first Ask the Cheese Man live show. It was great. Wow, how things have changed. Um, yeah, I I looked at the very first um, Ask the Cheese Man and it was a shocker. <laughs> uh, if you look back on the... You can go back through the playlist. If you can get... You can go to the playlist on the channel. And I'll tell you what, it was a shocker. The, the quality was absolutely disgusting uh i keep it up there just to remind myself how much things have got better that's for sure but thanks uh michael and jenny appreciate it um uh john says um idea i came across chefs using chocolate to meat as a sauce uh have you tried adding chocolate or cocoa um no, I haven't, but I have had reports back from other home cheese makers, John, that it turns the cheese bitter. Um, it can, cocoa can be used as a rub on the outside of the cheese. Um, more, though, not to impart flavour, but more to protect the rind from mould. Um, but, yeah, if you put it into the curds uh, during milling or something like that, it tends to make the cheese go bitter. Herb says, um, I tried the plastic type cheesecloth. It was too brittle. Uh, would probably work great for cream cheeses or something, but it didn't hold up well to real pressing. Yeah, okay. Uh, Patricia says, Chucks is to Australia as J cloth is to USA and Canada. Yeah, so, yeah, J cloth. Right, so, yeah, so that's what I put underneath the mat in the, in the ripening box to increase the humidity. So make sure it's just moist. But yeah, thanks Patricia for the translation. <laughs> um, uh, another one, Sham Wow. Oh, okay, that's right. Not to be confused with Chooks. Yeah, Chucks, not a Chook. I've got a chicken in my garden. Her name is Mrs. Potts um, because she likes sitting in pots. <laughs> Don't ask me where the name came from. But she's lovely. She's the oldest chicken I've ever had. I think she's nearly, um, gosh, she must be nearly 15 years old now. She's still going strong. Anyway, um, Jim says, my wife uh, is a weaver. She would not approve of J-Clock or Chucks. Yeah, look, it's just a means to an end. Um, Krogan says, horse milk cheese. Yeah, that is another one. It's very expensive. Uh, like I said, that donkey cheese uh, that I've seen, I think it's in, um, could be in the Balkan states. So it uh, starts with a P. Pool. P-U-L-E. There you go. Just came to me. So, yeah, very expensive cheese. Um, uh, Persnickety says, with Plyban, uh, you might need to do a clean press for an hour or so to smooth out any wrinkles in the rind. Oh, okay. Uh, Finker says, buffalo cheese sounds interesting to me. Uh, indeed, Finka, all of the, well, the vast majority of the pasta filata or the stretch curd cheeses um, made in Italy are made from buffalo milk. Uh, it's a high fat milk. Um, I haven't used it. Um, but yeah, it is the, um, um, look, as far as, bu buffalo milk is higher in fat content than cow's milk, but I kind of, in my brain, I kind of threw it into the um, the cow's milk 
uh, container, but yeah, it's, it's not. And RTG Jazz says, water buffalo milk, that was the answer to it, the trivia question that won us the game. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Um, so, yeah, so buffalo milk, if you can get it, um, it is difficult to get your hands on. Um, uh, oh, Gonksi Nami says, hi, my abors has white mold on it and I don't know what to do because I can't clean the spice rind. Please help me. Um, yep. Uh, I haven't come across... So I have had a Boar's cheese before, but I haven't had it with a spice rind. If it's got mould on it, it's not good. Um, and if you can't clean it up because it's got something on the rind, then, yeah, you're between a rock and a hard place, I think, there. Um, what you could do is scrape off whatever you've got on the rind clean up your cheese with a simple brine solution and then reapply it. But I can't think of any other way to do it. Um, uh, Krogan says, horse milk cheese is good. Common in some parts of the world, rich and grassy. Very interesting. Um, what time is it? We've got five minutes to go and we've still got lots of stuff in the chat here. Um, uh Goltza says hello from Sweden. Hello, Goltza. Um, uh, John says, uh, is there a cheese that has a sweet flavour? Let me think back to all of the... Yeah, look, there are a few of those. Um, there's a, some sweet and cream cheese um, cheeses. Um, you know, things like uh, cream cheese and apricots and stuff like that. They're all sweetened artificially. Well, they add sugar to them, not artificial. Um, sweeteners but I find that the Alpine style cheeses have a sweeter flavor than other cheeses which have a, a more umami flavor so um, any of your Alpine style cheeses including any of the Swiss style with the holy the eyes are sweeter than um, the other ones anyway Annoying fan says, I didn't know chickens could live that long. Yeah, indeed. Chickens can live... Um, I can't remember the, the oldest living chicken, a domestic chicken. But yeah, my, she's, um, she's, a, she's an old bird, that's for sure. Stop laying years ago. So she's in the kind of Gavin's chicken retirement home. Um, so not much I can do about that. <laughs> um, so we don't get any eggs. I feed her. She's a lovely girl. Have a chat every day to her. Um, yeah, anyway... Mrs. Potts, that's her name. Um, Martin says, um, I, I would really like to see a thistle rennet cheese made. Hopefully uh, something like uh, um, Sarah da Estrala, Estrala cheese, I believe this is thistle rennet. Yeah, look, there is a cardoon thistle rennet that you can get. Um, it... If you age the cheese longer than three months, apparently, it tends to make it go bitter, Martin. Um, but I can't get my hands on it here in Australia. There, <clears throat> there isn't any for sale, so that may be difficult. So apologies in up front. Um, just one asbestos says, apparently there are a few cheeses produced by a moose farm in Sweden. They make a rinded cheese, a blue and a feta. Very interesting. Um, uh, Katarina says brown cheese is not really a cheese but it's sweet so uh, just to amplify on that so uh, my sauce which is a, a reduced whey cheese so you get a whole bunch of whey um, simmer it for hours and hours and it reduces down to this brown paste uh, which you can then add uh, you can add sweetness to it. You, some people add cream to it to stop the grittiness in it. Uh, but it is sweet because what it is, it's the leftover um, whey proteins and lactose that are in the whey and it tends to be a bit sweeter. Um, but yeah, thanks Katarina for throwing that one in the ring. Um, uh, Dr. Guy says, is it common that you practice cheese making habits that you wouldn't professionally advise? No, not that I know of. Um, no, 
I certainly follow all my own advice as far as making sure that every time I do a cheese making session, I sanitize all of my equipment um, and make sure that uh, there are no wild yeasts or molds or anything lurking on any of the gear that I use. I boil all the stainless steel stuff, which is the majority of the stuff I use, uh, and use white vinegar or um, uh, a weak uh, bleach solution to do all the plastic stuff. So, no, I certainly don't have any adverse cheese making habits. Um, Persnickety says, um, have a large gouda, gouda in the brine right now. Uh, I haven't weighed it, but it feels about eight pounds or so. Goodness me, what's that about? Um, uh, Three point seven kilos. That's massive. That's a big cheese. Uh, mascarpone is a sweet cheese. Yeah, because it's cream that's kind of like been semi-coagulated. So yes, it is a sweet cheese. Um, uh, Goxy. Goxy says, I think howder is sweet in perception. Yeah, it is, because it's a washed curd cheese. So is um, Edam. That is always good. Um, uh, Patricia says, one cheese that isn't specifically sweetened but seems sweet is Nokolost. I think that's how you say it. It is infused with star anise, cardamom, cloves, stuff like that. Yeah, that... I think it's more the spices, Patricia. I haven't had it yet, so and you've made it. I need to make it. Um, uh, John says, what about camel milk uh, for other milks? Yeah, difficult to get there. There are a couple of um, camel milk factories uh, here in Australia, not factories, dairies in Australia. Uh, one in South Australia that I know of called Humpalicious um, Camel Milk. It's very cool. I actually get a lady buys um, cheese making supplies from us but she's been having trouble because cows are in it doesn't really set camel's milk very well it's a very fine um cheese so yeah um uh last question uh from valerie says uh gavin do you prefer animal rennet or vegetable rennet and why um, animal rennet is difficult to get here in Australia, uh, for starters. You can buy it, but it expires very quickly, um, as far as the best before date. Vegetarian rennet, uh, I use and I sell. I don't have any animal rennet for sale at Little Green Workshops. Um, and the um, reason I use it, because it has a long shelf life. A lot of home cheese makers don't make cheese all the time. Uh, so it has a very long shelf life, uh, and it's predictable. The outcome is always predictable as far as I'm concerned when using, say, the um, the liquid rennet that I uh, that I use. So it's a Chimax Plus is the version that I use. It's not actually on the label. There's a Green Living Australia one that we use. So, um, uh, yeah, Green Living Australia, liquid rennet. Um, and, yeah, it's got an IMCU of 200, and it's very predictable. It works every time. I've even used it when it's uh, you know a year past its best before date, and it still works. So that, that's that's just my preference. Plus, I can't get my hands on animal rennet. Um, must be an Australian thing. I'm not sure. Uh, Finker says, "I bet your fruit cake cheese uh, is sweet." Yeah, the um, Christmas fruit cake one. Yeah, that was sweet because of the added. Um, um, uh, what was it? It was like a fruit cake mix. So. Yeah, it had um, uh, dried uh, peel and um, like orange peel and stuff like that. Um, and uh, uh, raisins and cranberries and all that sort of... Yeah, that was that was a sweet cake. So yeah, thanks Finker for reminding me. Um, I've gone three minutes past the time. So I'll call it a show, I think. Yeah, let's, let's just stop there. Uh, thank you one and all for... Um, uh, asking questions because without you know without your questions it wouldn't be much of a show and today there were a lots of questions thank you so much appreciate it um and uh, yeah they were all great questions I, there was nothing i couldn't really wrap my um my brain around so yeah it's good to see that the years of experience in cheese making helps all of you guys uh and girls to um to make better cheese so 
Well done. And keep those photos coming in. Don't stop. Because the gallery, I don't want the galleries getting shorter and shorter and shorter and then there's no gallery. I love the gallery. The gallery's great because it just showcases your cheese that you've made. And I don't care if it's from my recipes. It's no big deal. Just send them in. Send them in. I love them. All right. Well, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds. There'll be a show on Wednesday night. Um, uh, depends on how tired I am from all the editing and stuff. But i got with two editors now, me and Ben. Um, so... Yeah, we're, we're plowing through all the content. Um, so, yeah, I'll catch you on Wednesday night. If I don't see you then, I'll see you next Sunday morning. All right, thanks, Curd Nerds. See you next time. Bye-bye.